So, first we watched the Academy Award winner for Best Picture, Parasite. Yes. And now we're watching Academy Award winner Leonardo DiCaprio <laughs> in The Revenant? Yes. What? Uh, oh, yes. What is this podcast turning into? I thought it was, it's, it's B-Movie Mania. Not... A-Movie Mania, baby. Ugh. Oh glad this bit is happening <laughs> what is happening to the podcast it's a movie <laughs> mania where's uncle lloydy pure uncle lloydy Welcome to the crossroads of camp, the bastion of the bazaar, the place where low budgets meet high praise. Yes, it's B-Movie Mania. And now, B-Movie Maniacs, here are your hosts, the cream of the crap, the connoisseurs of cult, your cinematic creepy uncles, Paul Brooks, Mike Hayes, Jason Hulls, and Crazy Chris Hudson. Wait, Paul never said the title of the film. <laughs> it's fine. Oh, okay. I said The Revenant. Oh, did you? I didn't hear it. Yeah, you I did. Said Rev I said okay. The Revenant, which is actually not the title of this movie. The title of this movie is Modern Vampires, a.k.a. Revenant. Welcome to B-Movie Mania. I'm your host for the evening, Paul A. Brooks. Joining me, per usual, is sensual Chris Hudson. Hello, wanker. <laughs> Seductive Jason Hulls. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> and someone who just might be the Hollywood slasher, my case. You're a real set, Paul, you know that? No wonder everyone hates you. <coughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry about it. I'm kidding, Paul. I love you. Love you too, bud. Aww. That was a quote from the movie. What movie? The, the one with the bear. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. The Revenant with right. with Leonardo, how did you pronounce it? DiCrap DiCaprio? Right. That, that is how you pronounce it, but the name of the movie is Revenant, not The Revenant. There's some confusion here. You guys kept asking me, What's the name of the movie? Where is it? Like, nobody knew what was going on. I still don't. Hey, did you guys know that I used to confuse Leonardo DiCaprio with Casper Van Dien in the 90s? Chris, in honor of the film Creep Van, which you and I both love. Oh, yeah. Can we refer to him as Casper Creep Van Dien? <laughs> Casper Creep Van Dien. For the rest of the night. Creep Van! <laughs> Motherfucking Creep Van! Slime! <laughs> no green slime. No, no, no. Oh. Although you can buy the t-shirt. It's up now on... Uh, Store. It's so movie good. Movie. By the way, that t-shirt is so fucking great. It looks awesome. Hell yeah. Dude. Original design by Car Brooks. Yeah, I was going to ask who did that. That's so good. She's so talented. Crankin' Rankin'. We are getting way ahead of ourselves. Wait, no, I, ho I thought this was the quickest episode ever. We're doing plugs. <laughs> yeah, we're done. <laughs> <laughs> Leave us a review. Five stars on your favorite podcasting service. Thank you. Good night. We, we watched Modern Vampires. That's what I choose to refer to it as. Because I don't like the title Revenant. It, there's just it's not much title. to it. It's a better title. Yeah. Modern Vampires is a better title yeah. for this. It's easier to find that way, too. Like, on, on IMDb, it's called Modern Vampires. On Wikipedia, it's called that. The only reason Revenant... It's like on Amazon as Revenant, and then I guess that was the original working title. Huh. And you gotta love yeah. it. Anytime a movie has a working title throughout <laughs> its existence. Like, they just can't <laughs> fucking pick. You know it's gonna be good. Any movie that has more than one title is gonna be quality. I think Creep Van Dien uploaded The Revenant himself, <laughs> and he's the only one who liked that better than Modern Vampires, and that's why it's called that. <laughs> it's probably got the, the, the that spin just because of the Academy Award winning film. Like, that's hmm. probably the reason. Mm -hmm. We used to call it that. Let's do it. You know? Right. So so it's a real parasite sort of situation. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone's going to believe Tom Hardy is a big, nasty-looking thing on the cover. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Guys, if we, uh, when we finish the movie we're all working on, why don't we right now decide to call it Casablanca, and we'll change it to what we're going to call it. But that way, you know. Sounds good. Yeah. We could just change yeah, the name yeah. later. So I was hoping for Citizen Kane. Well, but... we could do Citizen Kane's. So it's just, Ooh, you Citizen know. Citizen Kane's. Like, there's Citizen... multiple of them. Like Alien and Aliens? Right. People don't know if there's multiple Citizen Canes. <laughs> see, see Orson Welles bursting out of your chest. 
Citizen Kane's. <laughs> okay, uh, we, let's. We got to get back on track here. Um, uh, modern vampires. A 1998, I guess, I, this is what IMDb said, TV movie. Yeah, I don't know what the hell is up with that. I don't know if that's true or not. Maybe like a Showtime or Cinemax or something. Yeah. Had to have been. There's no way that was for (laughs) anything else. I don't know what sort of television network would allow Creep Van Dien to be on their screen for that long. (laughs) Hey, now I like Creep Van Dien. (laughs) We like one movie he was in, and honestly, he's not the reason that movie was good. Uh, If you're talking about Starship Troopers, you're absolutely right. I saw it in the theater eight times. I also looked at uh, Creep Van Dien's... Oh, God. (laughs) (laughs) If I contribute nothing else to the episode tonight, let it be Creep Van Dien. Well, well, now we have someone has to pick Creep Van for the show. I mean, fans of this podcast know Creep Van. Um. I looked at his IMDb, and he did Starship Troopers, and then the very next movie listed on his IMDb is is Modern Vampires. Yeah. Nice. Like, wow. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> it's a real step up, if you ask me. Yeah. But anyway, this is a movie that was directed by the great Richard Elfman, who we've reviewed on the show mm-hmm. before, mm-hmm. and who we've had uh, in our marathon for Forbidden Zone, and uh, he, he did... Um, shrunken heads which we did for our halloween special last year so we really like richard elfman um jay do you would you mind going to imdb and reading the plot synopsis of this movie because it's one of my favorite descriptions that i've heard in a long time sure so you're gonna make imdb do our job for us it's standard protocol chris oh (laughs) Modern vampires. Here we go. I have this thing going on with my voice where since I'm in quarantine, I don't talk at all. I don't, I, you know, I'm, I'm by myself. I don't have anyone to talk to. So I feel like my throat closes up and I can't, if I sound a little raspy tonight. So what he's saying is that listeners, Paul really needs a friend to talk to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, let's do a Zoom or something, you know. All right, you, I got the, the outline here. Yeah, oh. hit me. A borderline fascistic Dr. Van Helsing unwittingly hires crack-smoking gangbangers <laughs> to pursue the decadent vampires who secretly control Hollywood in the United States. There it is. That's yeah. that's that's a pretty fair description. No, it's not. Well, it's <laughs> but but he doesn't unwittingly hire crack-smoking gangbangers. Okay, he that's fully true, yeah. knows that he's hiring Mm, we'll get I don't to know it. if they smoke crack. We'll get they to it. They don't smoke crack. They, as far as we can tell, they don't run the United States either. I'm sorry, Paul. I, and you know what? No, you know what? The vampires are decadent. They are decadent, Paul. I'm sorry. They are decadent. Well, you know what? You know what, Mike? Quick takes. Quick takes. No, that's rating time, Chris. Oh, is that the wrong one? Oh, <laughs> yeah. da, 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 da. I haven't listened to the show in a while. I don't commute anymore, so I don't listen to any podcasts. Chris Hudson, quick take. I was holding my opinion opinion of this movie pretty close to my chest tonight, but now it's all, i got to let it all out of the bag. Do it. I love this movie as much as Nico loves Natasha Lyonne. As much as Craig Ferguson loves nightclubs full of chained up people solely there for his bloody pleasure. And I love this movie nearly as much as Mike Hayes loves Bluetooth headphones. <laughs> Spoiler alert, that's a lot. Wow. That's a lot. Okay. <laughs> Mike Hayes. I just... I never knew vampires can do sex. <laughs> of course, They can, yeah. they can, yeah. They can go for hours. Never knew it. Never knew vampires can do sex. They do it real good. <laughs> okay, Jason Hulse, quick take. Uh, you, you know all those sounds, the cougar sounds that Nico makes <laughs> oh when she attacks God. the woman in the in the dress shop? Just Paul, just add all those sounds. <laughs> no, not all of them. <sighs> not all of them. Just 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 a good handful of those cougar sounds. Oh, go on, kill the fucking bitch. Go on, rip her fucking lungs out. Come on, you little rascal. <laughs> Yeah, or Chris, yeah, you could do it, Chris. That's fine. Close enough. So, <laughs> Casper Van Dien plays a vampire named Dallas. 
And he's a cool dude. He's got, you know, the typical fang teeth and all that. He drives a cool car. He drives Richard Elfman's car. That's true. Is that That's a car fact? Yeah. Is, oh, oh, my no. God. Car facts. Car facts. God damn it. <laughs> wow. Someone else got in before I could. Good job. <laughs> I'll allow it only, only because I already have the you know, audio blip for it. So that's fine. <laughs> but I wanted to, I wanted to point out that when I looked at his IMDb, he is still doing an absolute ton of movies. And his next one, it's in post-production right now, but it's called, ah, Roach. <laughs> oh dude. I saw that. Oh my God. I mean, you're not going to see ah, Roach. Come on. Yeah, you are. <laughs> yeah. That has got to be like some sci-fi channel bullshit. Creep Van Dien in a movie called Ah Roach. I'm there. Uh, and we also have in this film <laughs> Natasha Gregson Wagner, yeah, who yeah. plays Nico. I'm sorry, but she is skanky in this movie, and I absolutely love it. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> it's great. I was like, I've, I know I've seen her. I know I've seen her. And you've seen her everywhere. She's been in a lot of stuff, but uh, maybe my favorite is Lost Highway. There you go. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the famous daughter of uh, Robert Wagner and uh, Natalie Wood. She's doing her own thing, mm -hmm. um, and she she poses uh, in in the film. Her character poses as a prostitute in order to feed on guys. You know, she's a vampire, and then during the day, I guess she lives in some sort of abandoned tanker truck. <laughs> she lives in a tanker. <laughs> That's pretty clever, though. I thought yeah, that was kind of cool. Hey, Paul, can you edit in a, I guess a condom is in order here. Okay? <laughs> Dude, that's one of the funniest <laughs> lines in the movie. <laughs> uh, I think maybe a condom's in order here, huh? Ah! John picks her up. They drive off to some abandoned area. Nico turns on the Slade Craven. There, yeah, Slade Craven. Yeah. She turns on some heavy metal. She's thrashing out. She's really into it. They drive to a secluded area. Buy her t-shirt. Making a little small talk. This guy is the most awkward guy ever. And Nico just like hisses at him. <sighs> just That's a great response. When when you're talking to, to your prostitute, you want her to hiss at you. It's amazing. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. To be fair, <laughs> I, I think any sex worker will probably actually require a condom, you know, for safety's sake. But just, just. Just anyone out there. Yeah. Eh, use a condom. Use it. Safety yeah. first. Safety Espe first. Right. Especially if they hiss at you. Yeah. But I guess the thing to point out here early on, their vampire teeth stay in place permanently. You know how some vampires, the vampire teeth, like, come out when they're ready to feed? Yeah. They always have the vampire teeth, and nobody really seems to care all that much. Yeah, no. no. Well, one thing, one thing I really liked about this is that the length of their vampire teeth kind of indicates how old they are. Hmm. So yeah. Nico's Nico's teeth aren't that long, so she's only been a vampire for like 20, 25 years. She's a baby. How old are you? I don't know. Look at this, Richard. What do you think? Oh, they're cute little things. I say she's been with us 20, 25 years. Come on, get your fucking fingers out of my mouth. Yeah, the cast of this movie is just crazy. The the, well, the people they have. In to, this. to be fair, Craig Ferguson is fucking awesome in this movie. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, it's a great cast. I mean, we also got Kim Cattrall, who plays a vampire. Her name is <laughs> Ulrike or something like that. I don't know. Ulrika or something? Yeah, Ulrike. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. Natasha Leone. Yeah. Udo Kier. Udo Kier, yeah. yeah. And, and and Kim, when we first see Kim here, she is hanging out with Craig Ferguson, who... Wait, Craig, Craig Ferguson? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mike, I get him confused with uh, Craig uh, Kilborn. <laughs> Both late Craig night Ferguson, hosts. I believe, took over the Craig Kilborn yeah. spot when he failed at late yeah. night. Right. <laughs> but hey, letting Craig Kilborn fail at late night, let Jon Stewart succeed at The Daily Show. Yeah, it's true. there it is. Uh, but Craig Ferguson is also a vampire named Richard. And so these are sort of, you know, the titular modern vampires. And they all secretly run Hollywood together. Along with, of course, Count Dracula himself, who's played by Robert Pastorelli. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> well, I'm not very familiar <laughs> with, but that's okay. I know the name, yeah. I can't I, I, I 
couldn't remember what he was in. You know, if I, if I may, I kind of feel like there was a missed opportunity. If you've got Udo in your movie, dude, he should have been the main vampire. Mm. Like, he should have been Dracula. I don't think he's in movies where he doesn't play vampires. I think you're right. But the Count is not happy with Nico, uh, Chris. She's She's a little... Out of control, and the cops actually have a name for her. What's what's well, she, the name she's they got the, for? Her? She's the Hollywood slasher. Yeah. yeah, and you know the Dracula is not happy because she is not an approved vampire in his city. Which Chris reminds me a little bit of when we used to play Vampire the Masquerade. Oh yeah. Oh, I got all kinds of shades of Vampire the Masquerade from this. Yeah. I wonder if anybody involved in the movie was familiar with the game. I mean, yeah. I, I can't. I can't imagine they weren't. Yeah, because the, the, the whole the whole society so structure is reminiscent of the game. Yeah. And so I thought that was interesting. Hmm. It's interesting how we talk about how Nico is an unapproved vampire, according to Count Dracula, which really lays into the classism, but also about racial divide and stuff like that. And then nationalism, okay. really. It really gets into a bit of a nationalistic <laughs> situation. Oh, where, yeah. Where, yeah, well, you know, where the vampires are, the, they are their own thing. They don't want someone else coming in without them being, unless they are allowed in legally kind of a thing, which really culminates with the line that Chris Hudson already announced, where where uh, Nico shouts, I'm an American citizen, I can do what I want, blah, blah, blah. She goes on a bit, a bit of a tirade about that, and that's when you really connect with her. Oh, I should leave the country? Well, I got news for you. I'm an American citizen, and no fucking foreign bag of shit's gonna run me out of my own goddamn country. <laughs> yeah, you know, Creep Van Dien really needs to uh, watch who he hangs around and who he turns into the hours. <laughs> you know, he just seems like he created this... Va- it doesn't really say. You just assume that he's in love with this girl. And he makes her into a vampire, which doesn't really come out till the end of the movie. Spoiler alert. But... You know, it's like, really? I mean, listen to her. <laughs> Why would you turn her into well, a vampire? Think about this a little bit. He made her into a vampire. He uh-huh. probably listened to her then, and then he abandons her for 30 years. Which, again, why? We don't know. I want to help you. Yeah, right. You don't even know me. I know there's a whole bunch of bad characters out there ready to kill you. Oh, yeah? Well, I'm going to make them wish they was never born. She has amnesia in the film and doesn't un- re- remember how she became a vampire or even her past at all. And they don't really go into why that is. You know, I've got a theory on that. I bet she got really blackout drunk and only just recently kind of came out of her hangover. It could be. It could she be. woke up in that tanker and crawled <laughs> out. Just, what is this? How did I get here? She fell she fell into a tanker of wine. Drank <laughs> it for 30 years. <laughs> and then came out as a trumper. Yeah. Yeah. So Van Helsing <laughs> <laughs> rolls into town. Rod Rod Steiger? Rod Steiger? Rod Stewart. Rod, Rod Stewart, Stewart rolls rolls into town. If you think I'm sexy and you want my body. <laughs> and he's he's here to kill some vampires. It's some kind of an establishment. I don't know, maybe a club or something. Evidently it's popular. I don't know, but there are many. It's an infestation. I gotta pee really bad, and I feel like this is a good place to describe this vampire nightclub did the three of you talk amongst yourselves and give me a little give give the listeners a feel for this club that they're at can i just say i feel like this is the scene this scene is why paul picked this movie oh totally but i mean (laughs) the the best way i can describe this is that craig ferguson loves this club as much as i love this movie I'm get, I'm picking up on the fact that we are going to get wildly different scores. Here. Wow. This is awesome. What did you just say, Hudson? That you love this movie as much as Craig Ferguson loves this club? Okay, well, I mean, I'm getting a little out of hand there, but all No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Chris. Stand your fucking ground, dude. I like this. I like this a lot. <laughs> well, we'll find out when rating when the ratings come Listen, in. Listen, our ratings are going to be wildly different, but we can all come together about one thing, and we do know that this is why Paul picked this movie. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> oh, there are tits tits everywhere. It's it's an oh. S&M club like to the max where yeah. all the vampires are feeding on the naked people. There's tons of naked people everywhere mm-hmm. even mm-hmm. The, and a lot of them are chained up um what about that table with the head like where oh, the yeah. head sticks out <laughs> that guy is a lawyer he's an attorney and you can't do this to him no i'm an attorney 
You can't do this! But the cow decides to like cut his head open anyway with a saw and suck the blood out. Did you guys notice the band? This this club is so decadent, the keyboard player of the band, fully clothed, is air humping his keyboard. <laughs> I did not notice that. Hello, Count. It's been a long time. What do you want? My lovely city. Oh, I'm just here on a visit. Visit? I'll give you three days to enjoy the city and see the sights. Creep Van Dean. That's how you say it. Creep yeah, Van Dean. Creep Van Dean. Creep Van Van Dean. Creep Van Dean. <laughs> uh, see, now he sounds up. like a breakfast sausage. Wow, well, I'd love a sausage. Uh, walks up to the Count, and they talk. And the Count is like, you can. he doesn't want him there. But he's like, fine, you can stay for three days, see the city, and then go. Like, it seems totally fine. To be, to be honest, the, the Count seems pretty fair about stuff. Reasonable. He's like yeah. a bad guy. Right. I mean, he well, I don't just... think you ascend to the heights of the Hollywood scene without being at least, you know, willing to be a little cool now and yeah. then. Yeah. I don't know but... Crete Van Dien's problem. If someone said, hey, you can come to L.A. for three days, then you got to go. I'm like, that's all I fucking want, because fuck that hellhole. <laughs> like, yes, perfect. This is what I want. I have a question. Van Helsing is right outside in plain sight of this vampire club talking into his little tape recorder. And it's this not even the first time in the movie where I'm wondering just like, how is this guy alive? <laughs> he's so inept as a vampire hunter. It's ridiculous. Well, he's very old. He has a heart condition. He, yeah, he has a heart condition. He's 90 years old. He's an ex-Nazi. And he's standing there right by the door talking into his recorder about how he hates vampires. Uh, he needs some help dealing with this infestation. So he places an ad in the newspaper, and Jay, who answers the ad for the job? Time bomb! <laughs> whoop, whoop. My name is uh, Dr. Van Helsing. Yeah, people call me Time Bomb. Hell yeah. Best character in the movie. Describe Time Bomb, please. He's a gangster crip. Hell yeah. Paul, do you recognize Time Bomb? You know, I looked him up. I didn't recognize his name or, or know him from anything else, no. Oh, Paul, you know him from something. Yeah, what is it? Oh, little episode of Silk Stockings called Glory Days. <laughs> oh, Paul, he plays an up-and-coming basketball star. Oh, my goodness, Paul. It is USA <laughs> up all night. Ten seasons of Silk Stockings. I might have missed that one. Fuck. Did the show run that long? Yeah, dude. Silk Stockings oh was on a long time. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> it was literally up all night and then Hell through the yeah. next morning. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. That was a pretty sexy show. Absolutely. Oh, my God. When I was 13. I mean, if you like stockings. Oh, well, yeah. Oh. <laughs> I like stockings almost as much as I like that vampire club. We can go back and talk more about the club if you want to. <laughs> yeah, go ahead, Chris. Well, I mean, you've got people in cages, and Craig Ferguson is just <laughs> running around from person to person, just like, actually ah, doing it. Ah. He, can't, he cannot settle on just one victim. He is sucking the blood from this girl, this guy, that guy, this girl, this girl, this girl. I mean, just leading them out, just, he is sucking the blood off of like everyone he's got a holding them down and sucking them dry the <laughs> the club is a buffet there for craig ferguson's pleasure it's amazing it's so great so <laughs> folks uh <laughs> let's take a break right here and learn about an exciting new product from our sponsor night beast industries what's so funny they pay for the show Hey, we get it. You're a hip, young, successful business person who just wants to have a good night when the sun goes down. And now that America has reopened and everything is completely safe, you're ready to hit the town and get a little wild. There's just one problem. Vampires. They're waiting inside every dance club, every clothing store, and every Quiznos to pounce on you and instantly drain your delicious life juice. If only there was a way to keep those blood-sucking freaks away from your gorgeous neck. Well, now there is. With Night Beast Industries' new product, Blood Be Gone. Simply extract all of your blood with our patented blood removal device. As that precious crimson liquid leaves your body, it's replaced with Blood Be Gone, a blood simulation fluid that not only keeps you alive for up to three hours, it also tastes terrible to those dark creatures of the night. If any vampire tries to leap on you like a cracked out cougar and go to suck town, they're in for a nasty blood be gone surprise. Now you can hit the club and grind on some booty without fear of having your cranium sawed wide open as part of a blood buffet for some out of touch immortal asswipe. 
Go to bit.ly slash nightbeast today to order your two liter bottle of Blood Be Gone. Blood Be Gone. Let the vampires know they suck. So Van Helsing and Time Bomb, which I just love saying. Oh, uh, <laughs> Paul, it gives me a real flashback to uh, Snake Hater 2, the drug buster. Yeah. Where we got sidekick speedboat. <laughs> They break into one of the uh, vampire houses during the day, and they find Vincent. Udo Kier. Yeah, Udo. Yep, yep, yep. And they're about to kill him, but Time Bomb is worried because he's on probation. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, he can't fuck that up. No. Chris, what what happens here? (laughs) Well, Van Helsing. Again, I don't really know how he's a vampire hunter because he makes Time Bomb kill kill Vincent and he hands him the stake Time Bomb doesn't want to do it he but screams at him so yeah he screams at him and Time Bomb just stakes him and then Nelson makes him cut off his head <laughs> oh man this Time Bomb was not prepared for this but yeah. he's a trooper he he does it anyway because I mean not after he hammers the shit out of him though <laughs> yeah he doesn't just cut his head off one thing that's different but, about this movie too is that like it takes a long time to get the steak in. Like you don't just pop yeah. the steak in there yeah. and the vampire's yeah. done. You got to hammer away at it. Hammer for away a long at it with time. comical sound effects. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Dallas finds Nico wandering around Hollywood, actually on, on Hollywood Boulevard. They start doing kinky vampire shit like right off the bat. Oh yeah. What? Where is it? Where are they, Paul? They are on Hollywood Boulevard, right across the street from the Hollywood Roosevelt which I hung out at a lot when I first moved here. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, because she has amnesia. And she's prostituting. She's hooking. She's hooking. Yeah, she's getting that money. Yeah. She's looking to suck. Well, in more ways than one. Mm-hmm. No, I think only the one way, okay, actually. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Nearly 20 years ago, there was this vampire, and he wanted revenge, and he chose the most... Genius and cowardly way, you know, to do it. It's like, I don't know, one in the morning, and Van Helsing and Time Bomb are at the motel just smoking and drinking vodka together. (laughs) (laughs) And this is where we get some backstory, Chris, about uh, Van Helsing's son. Yeah, uh, so his son was turned into a vampire, and I think we find out that uh, Dallas is the one who did it. Yeah, yeah. But uh, Dallas brings Nico to the vampire house. Uh, Kim Cattrall and Craig Ferguson give her a bath. I don't know if anybody wants to comment about that or not. Well, well, it's here we found out that Nico died in those rags. I did not catch that. Well, I think it was just a throwaway line, but I like to think I like to believe that it's true. The other throwaway line I enjoyed was, <laughs> "Okay, my little icky poo, now I clean you for real." Uh, <laughs> oh, I, I, since we're talking throwaways, and while I do feel every line was a throwaway in this film, there was <laughs> there was a thing way earlier that I just want to say. Some woman about some guy she's about to to munch on goes. Aren't you a plump little mister? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that's at the beginning. I fucking loved it. Anyway, continue on. Bath scene. Well, the bath scene, I also loved that, they, that they're scrubbing her down with fucking Comet. Uh, yeah, there's sure. a Comet prominently placed in the scene like they were some sort, like it was product placement or something. Yeah. <laughs> okay, my little icky boo. Now I clean you for real. Well, Van Helsing and Time Bomb track uh, Dallas and Nico to her lovely tanker truck and (laughs) Nico who had procured a gun earlier in the film pops out and starts shooting at them a little bit of a scare for uh, Van Helsing and Time Bomb so Time Bomb gets the idea that they need to bring in some reinforcements which they do in the form of Soda Pop (laughs) Little Monster and Trigger who are all Los Angeles Crips yeah the crew bringing in (laughs) Setting the stage for the historic Crips versus Vampires fight later in the movie. <laughs> and, and they don't believe a word that Van oh, Helsing no. is saying. Oh, they are joking around constantly. They think this whole thing is stupid. <laughs> They're just drinking, getting high in the back of, of yep. Van Helsing's creep van. Hey, man, we got to have some sounds before we party, so why don't you just get with it? <laughs> party? What are you talking about party? You understand what the, I'm talking about people who live off human blood. I'm talking about people who destroy things. I'm talking about bad, bad people. You're talking about us, right? <laughs> <laughs> you 
Uh, and then, Chris, you alluded to this a second ago. Dallas and Nico have some hot vampire yeah. sex. Paul, yeah. I am convinced that this is this scene is the reason you picked this movie. You know what? You're not wrong. Oh, Jay, you think Paul? You think Paul likes the Casper Van Buttocks? We see Casper's full ass right here. <laughs> It's not bad. Yep. I'm not gonna lie. It's got a good. It's got some good cheeks. No. Well, there's a part where Richard Elfman says to Nico, he Wait, says, "Richard Elfman." Yeah, the director. You're, you're speaking as as the director. As the director. Oh, okay, like like oh. BTS. What does he say? Ever heard of him? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Richard Richard Elfman says to Nico. You know, hey, rise up off of Casper's body here and just kind of hiss around for a bit. <laughs> <laughs> then go back in for more. She then does. go back in for more. And mind you, she's completely naked at this part, so you get a full yeah. like topless shot of her just yeah. hissing. For like and this is seconds. where, right afterwards, the woman who has been posing as a prostitute then says, "I never knew vampires can do sex," and it yeah. is utterly baffling. And I loved every second of it. I never knew vampires could do sex. Well, that's a myth. With a good commercial lubricant, we could go for hours. She's only been posing as a prostitute. She hasn't been following through with the right. prostitute. Very true. She's still coming, and but. you know that because the, we no one's brought this up. The fucking noises she makes when she's sucking that neck. She is fucking well coming the whole time. Hell yeah, Mike. If you were to follow the rules of Vampire the Masquerade, it, I believe <laughs> really? the bite for the vampire is supposed to be orgasmic. Really? Well, that's yeah. she's the only one. No one else in this film no, seems. No, that's to every vampire. vampire movie ever. Well, Chris, am well, I wrong? Every vampire movie after Anne Rice's vampires, yeah. which were that's influenced right. Vampire the Masquerade. Oh yeah, no doubt. Which is, this yeah, is yeah. influenced by that. But the what she does, everyone else. And every other movie I've seen enjoy the sucking, but she is. Listen, guys, I don't know if you've heard of this Pornhub.com website, but what? let me tell you, it reminded me a lot of the noises I've heard on that sh that website. Every what? time she's sucking neck, it is when you look up vampire porn. Uh, yeah, or any well, porn. Well, Jay, let's just say Mike is holding them down and sucking them dry. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> You like it, don't you? Yes. And then they meet up with uh, the other vampires at Insomnia Cafe, which is down on Beverly Boulevard. You guys know. Oh, yeah, yeah. Of course. <laughs> yeah, been oh, there. Yeah, right next yeah. to the Gorn Rock, right? <laughs> no, very far from <laughs> Gorn Rock. I, I go, you go to Universal City Walk, cross down a couple no, blocks, no, go no, to no, this, no. right? No. No? Oh. No. It's farther south. I know what you're trying to do. By the Grove? It's close. Yeah, it's, it's fairly close to the Grove, Mike. It's okay. Is, is it near Disneyland? It's an hour away from Disneyland. Oh, okay. Is it near the Sea of Wet Shit? <laughs> <laughs> could be, could be. But, hey guys, uh, real quick, I'm sorry to divulge, uh, this, but there's a California pizza kitchen at the Grove that is so fucking good. Oh, well, there's a couple around. You don't have, yeah, you don't got to go to the Grove for that. Oh, I thought it was a thing. You can go head up to, um, if you're in Sherman Oaks, you can hit the, head up the one next to the Jama Juice at like uh, Ventura Boulevard and. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know that lady from Pumpkinhead, the uh, the main actress from Pumpkinhead has Ricci? a studio there. No, no Pumpkinhead. What? That's the main. Oh, <laughs> I'm thinking of Pumpkin, the the late '90s, early 2000s indie flick. Pumpkin. Oh my God, Paul! This is why you complain about having to edit so much. Are you thinking of Pecker, Mike? No, I'm thinking of Pumpkin. No peeking in the Pumpkin. No peeking in the pelt room, Pecker. Hey, we're recording this on John Waters' birthday, actually. So are we really? Yeah. Right today yeah. all right sorry paul for the uh no, california bit uh where the fuck am i jumba juice i mean uh the coffee shop which has my favorite line of the entire movie come okay out. well this is this is where nico runs into natasha leone in the bathroom oh yeah instantly they instantly become friends well they're both named natasha <laughs> that's true <laughs> yep. it makes sense so yeah. 
But I mean, it's fair to say, though, that N- Natasha Leone plays Natasha Leone in this. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, Natasha Gregson Ma- Wagner might be playing Natasha Gregson Wagner, too. We don't know. <laughs> Probably. Yeah, we don't know I am so into it. <laughs> <laughs> Would you ever want to go out together sometime? Yeah. Exchange numbers. Okay. The Count shows up and sees Nico, I think, for the first time here. Yeah. And uh, Nico calls him a bag of shit. In a fuckwad. Yes, and a, a fuckwad. Fuck wad. Bring it back. <laughs> Hashtag fuckwad. Bring it back. <laughs> Chris, what was your favorite line of this scene? Craig Ferguson's character and his wife are picking up this this author talking about Steven Seagal. <laughs> and, <laughs> and as they're walking out after the confrontation with the Count, he says, you're not gay? And Ferguson says, no, no, just by curious. Jealous, no, I'm not jealous. You're not gay. No, 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 just by curious. It's a lot better. It's a lot better just delivered in his line. It's just such. It's just such a small little like. Not even the focus of the scene. Just a <laughs> stupid little line. Just throwaway line. That this movie is filled with stuff like that. I just love these throwaway lines. And I think a lot of it is is because of the. The caliber of the of the cast, like yeah. I, the whole time, I'm like, what are all these people doing in this? I know, I know. <laughs> oh my god, they're all so great. Do you have any idea what you just did? I'm talking to you. You just threw that piece of shit. Dallas, you have to get the girl and leave the country tonight. That's right. We should get out of here. So once again, the count is being cool about things, and yep. people are going into his area, messing with him, and then getting mad that he's getting mad. I, I'm on. So far, I'm on the count side. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, without a doubt. Well, and then we get this scene here where Dallas takes Nico to her mom's trailer. Oh, and God. Oh, God. <laughs> apparently, you know, they haven't seen oh. each other in 20 years since Nico oh. turned into a vampire. They just think that she ran away, basically. Mm-hmm. This is so terrible. Jay, what are they what what yeah. happens in inside the trailer here? <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, so she hasn't seen anybody in 20 years. She goes in, uh, immediately accuses the stepdad of molestation, so he's a creep. Miss, our Nico ran off more than 20 years ago. You're saying you can't remember my face? Well, you ought to after doing all that sex shit to me when I was little. It just, I, I'm, I was like, why is Dallas or, or Creep Van Dien doing this? And the only thing I can think of is that I think he's trying to create a situation around her where she only depends on him. Mm. He is trying to control Nico, and this is one step of doing it, isolating her from her family. You're saying he's grooming her. That's fucked up. I think yeah. he's grooming her. Absolutely. Yeah, it took him fucking 30 years. but Yeah, finally. and he lost her for 30 years, but I think that's what he's doing. And pretty much nothing happens. Nico, or fucking uh, Creep Van snaps the dude's neck. Kills her stepdad. Mm-hmm. Her stepdad. The, the mom starts screaming. They leave, and they never mention it again. <laughs> but it does set up a climactic battle. Well, it does, and I think that's the only reason the, the scene exists, yeah. to be honest. There's a you. huge shootout uh, between Nico and, 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 and Dallas and the Count's henchmen. Somehow I tracked them there, I guess. Dude, this was maybe, this might be my favorite scene. Yeah, there's a fucking amazing stunt in yeah. this scene. Oh, when God. they are hiding and the goons are walking around with shotguns, Nico just does this righteous <laughs> jump, like 30 feet. It's awesome. Boom. It's just awesome. kills one of them, tosses Creep Van a shotgun. He jumps off of a roof, blasting. Oh, it's, it's so great. It's sweet. And, and, Maybe my favorite line is when they set the, the, I don't know what you want to call him, like the Dracula's main dude, they set him on fire and walk away. And you're like, okay, he's dead, right? Yeah. But he starts screaming, it's hot, it's hot. And he grabs a garden hose and starts trying to put himself out. I love that. Oh, God. Oh, that was such a great great part. I love it. And that was, you know, it's 1998, clearly all practical. They must have been doing some wire work or something. Yeah, something. Yeah, uh, yeah, for sure. It looked great. It did. I'm actually, I'm on the, the IMDb page here under the trivia, and it says that Nico stunt double was actually uh let me see here what does this say P f- played by P56 I don't P56 What the California Mountain Lion P56 No yeah see I felt a bit coming What 
You could just uh, tell Mike, sometimes. Mike, I, think, I think that was her voice double, not her stunt double. <laughs> wow, I wow, heard it was wow. Jean-Claude Van Damme, but he was fired from the project at one point in time. <laughs> Listen, you find anyone else that can jump that far with that form and have that awesome of a voice. It was fucking P-56 the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> You know, like like we kind of alluded to, the Crips aren't really taking any of this seriously. Wait, we're, we're gonna we're gonna skip the whole paint huffing scene. Yes. <laughs> oh jeez. Yeah. But they, good. They go inside the house, Mike. What happens? Uh, I'm gonna go pee. Can you help me out here? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. You got it. Yeah, yeah I got it. Go ahead, buddy. Go take All a right. pee. Okay. So guys, so now that Paul's gone. Um, I just want to tell you about the the 2006 film Bloods vs. Wolves, which is actually a turf war uh, film about the Bloods who are vampires and the wolves, which are werewolves. So it's it's technically kind of like a Crips Bloods vampire film. Uh, the Crips aren't in it. There's do werewolves the, instead. Do the do the wolves wear blue? You know they don't. Uh, I don't see that. I just see a cover, but the cr- the the Bloods are wearing red. And then on the cover, there's a vampire, or not a vampire, a werewolf guy. All so right. unless unless they've got the colors right, it is not a valid allegory. Wow, I didn't realize you were. Uh, a, He's a gangster historian. A gangster historian. All right. I've done. Sorry. I've done sorry. A little research. He likes accuracy with his gang warfare. <laughs> I'm just saying, if you if you're gonna do something, do it right. That's all I'm saying. So anyway, guys, put, Paul, Paul put me in charge of this. So let me get back into this here. Um, my notes next just say Christopher Walken's head, and I hope someone can tell me what that means. <laughs> I don't know oh, what that right. means. They find Udo's head. Oh, Udo's head. Yeah, Kim Cattrall yeah, yeah, yeah. finds Udo's head, and they're all sad because he died. Okay. I went to his house. I found him in the bed. This is definitely the work of Van Helsing. <laughs> bad, bad, Doctor Van Helsing. You should have killed him when you had a chance. <laughs> They light that really super posh prick on fire, and he he gets lit on fire. That vampire, and he just goes blimey, <laughs> <laughs> and it is very good. All right, that he does say that. Where'd we leave off? Well, we also left off where Van Helsing wow. <laughs> says, and and put this in, Paul. He says, "What do you say in your language? Chill it, chill it." <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, how was it? Whatever your name is, man. We gonna drop you off in the car wash. Get your man wax. Yeah. What did you say in your language? Chill it! Chill it! Yeah, they're supposed to wait to go attack the vampires, and the, the crypts are like, Pfft, and they just jump out of the van and charge the place. Okay. But what happens when they get inside? I mean, some shit goes down in here because, like, Craig Ferguson and everybody's just sitting there chilling. They're doing heroin. They are? There, yeah, there's yeah, they, there's a heroin girl there, and they're both draining her blood. Wow. Although I will say that Kim Cattrall did a little massaging of the boobies of the heroin girl. She didn't need to do that. She is going the extra mile. Well, she's a professional. They need to they need to call HR for that heroin, Dan, because <laughs> that was unacceptable. So they kill Craig Ferguson and, and and his wife. They do. It's sad. Then for some reason, the Crips. Tie Kim Cattrall down to a bed. Okay, Paul, I am convinced this scene is why you picked this movie. You are correct. (laughs) I am like, what the fuck is happening? It's on. Oh God. I don't who wants to take this? It's it's Paul, why don't you take this? Because this is the reason you picked this. This is your reason for picking this. You you take your your sin and you talk about it. Lay it on us. Kim Cattrall is tied down to the bed, and she just goes, Can I just put the clip in here, or do I have to no, talk about it? No, you have to say it. it. You you have to say say it, your Paul. sin. Yeah. Say you, it. You can put the clip in later, but I want to hear you say it. Yeah, We're going to put this do. in cut for time. She, said, she sees these four guys, and she's like, Why don't you, you know, have your way with me? Why don't you give it to me? And they're like, She wants us to fucker and I don't want to say it they do you're tired she wants us to fuck her hit it man give it to her give it to her so tired give it to her 
And then she transforms into this nasty, like, nasty monster looking thing. Still, still tied to the bed. And the guys are still like, eh, yeah, I'll still do it. <laughs> the only reason I think that, that this happened is because Kim Cattrall read the script and she said, absolutely fucking not. I am not getting gang banged on this bed in this fucking TV vampire movie. And so they had to get somebody else in the makeup in order to be able to do the scene. <laughs> well, sound right? Yeah. Could be. No, that sounds 100% right. Yeah, yeah I, I'll buy that. But we don't know that she wasn't the one under the makeup, do we? I, I don't remember. Well, I mean, it was a mask. There was no way to tell who was under it. it there's no reason to have done it. You, it, was, it wasn't her. It could have been well, easily somebody Well, else. it sounded like Kim Cattrall. <laughs> well, I'm sure she did some ADR. <laughs> Movie magic. The, the insanity of how things work. George Lucas must have been involved. Uh, so my notes next just say Van Helsing with no punctuation. Can, and I don't know what that means. Can I, can I, can I bring it back to the the sex scene that Time Bomb is totally, I would prefer not totally, to. Yeah, we need more. Yeah, Time Bomb is totally disgusted by what his friends are doing, <laughs> but eh, he's going to have his turn anyway. Why not? Yeah, he's, he does. He's like, okay, fine. Peer pressure is a dangerous drug. It's a cautionary tale, Chris. It's a cautionary tale of sexually transmitted vampire <laughs> diseases. <laughs> diseases. Um, and I then... told my kids about a cautionary tales of swords today. I think I'm going to watch it with them. <laughs> yes. So, like literally two hours ago, I was talking oh, about boy. fucking cautionary tales of swords. Cut you wide open. <laughs> They'll fucking slice a baby in two. <laughs> so, th so they end up in Creep Van's Creep Van at this point, right? <laughs> it's Creep Van Dean's Creep Van. Yeah, very meta. Creep Van in a Creep Van. It was sweet. Hey, and do you guys remember that Natasha Leone's in this movie? Because she's here too, <laughs> after being shot in the stomach. Yeah, I don't know why they're bringing her well, along, but okay. Right, well, yeah. Because she's not on Pee Wee's Playhouse anymore. That's why they brought her along. She was not in Pee Wee's Playhouse. She fucking was. What? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, she yeah. She played Pee Wee. Everybody was in Pee Wee's Playhouse. <laughs> Who? Oh, I did my research, Paul. Natasha Leone was in Pee Wee's Playhouse. Jimmy Smits. Well, everyone knows that. He's not in the He's not in this movie. <laughs> Paul Rubens was in fucking Paul Pee Wee's Playhouse. Was in Pee -wee's Thank Playhouse. you for giving us the entire cast of Pee Wee's Playhouse. <laughs> Christ. All right. We're moving on. We're moving so on. So in Creep Van's Creep Van, the gang members then start feeling ill they're like oh no we feel bad we have headaches our tummies hurt and then it turns out they're becoming vampires because they had sex with that fucking rubber doll that was on the bed uh, and and natasha is in the corner going guys i'm still here in the movie and we're like why she bleeds out for it has to be hours yeah dallas makes a deal with van helsing jay who dallas uh creep van dian Oh, thank you. Uh, oh, yeah. What's what's the sort of agreement that they come to here? Oh, dude, this is like the one part I didn't write down. Anybody else? I have written down Van Helsing with no punctuations. <laughs> it doesn't matter. They they try to get into Dracula's and the goons. Dracula's goons walk straight up to Van Helsing, and they're like, "Okay, come with us now." There's no struggle. It's terrible. <laughs> and the fight is terrible. Yeah, I feel like as the movie goes on, the sort of like care put into it kind of goes out the window. Oh, yeah, bit. none. <laughs> they yeah. throw Nico in a trunk like she's nothing. It, it just, it's simple. And they then they go to the club. It, it all culminates back at the sex club. Yeah. Yes. They get, everybody, the plan goes off the rails, basically. And, like, mm -hmm. Nico gets hooked up to this blood machine or something. And Chris... What happens to Van Helsing here? This is crucial. Um, well, I mentioned earlier that there was that attorney who got put in the table, his head just sticking out of the hole in the center of the table. Mm -hmm. That's what happens to Van Helsing. He becomes the bald guy in the middle of the table, ready for the count to take his cranial saw. skull saw. I'm not a doctor. I don't know the technical term. And ready to be sawn open <laughs> and his brain eaten and blood drunk. He should have just plunged some straws into his head. Yeah, that, that's that's pretty bad. I would have maybe put an umbrella in there. would have been yeah. perfect. So our main course this evening, the illustrious and distinguished... Yours, fight on! 
Dr. Frederick Van Helsing. So they've drank, they're drinking Nico's blood. Yes, they're drinking the vampire's blood in the club. Oh, and they're and also senators. Cre- yeah, there's governor-elect, the senators. Creep Van Dien drives the creep van into the club. They bust in fucking hard ticket to Hawaii style. So, and the Crips get out of the van and they just light the place up. It is bonkers. This is one of those parts, Paul, where I feel like uh, it exemplifies what you said a minute ago, where they just kind of stop caring about yeah. putting the movie together. Everyone's wildly shooting. Nothing okay, really all right, feels... all right, guys. Gu- okay, hey, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Everyone shut up for a second. <laughs> what about my clinkies? Jay, you just said it feels like this is where things started <laughs> falling apart, where people stopped caring. <laughs> yeah. I, I fucking dare you to tell me at any other point in this goddamn movie where anyone gave a fuck about what happened. Fucking I can do that. Matthew Bright, the longtime collaborator with Richard Elfman, fucking just fucking shat this one out. I don't know what the shit happened here. They got a paycheck, two million dollar budget. They pocketed one point five, and good for them. Good for them. But at no fucking point did anyone give a shit about the plot or shit about anything fucking else in this film. <laughs> Rant over. Oh god damn it. Well then. You really should just use that for you sh- that should be your review. Oh, your I review. got more for the review. <laughs> okay, all right. So, all right. So basically to let's see if we can get through this here. They drive <laughs> they drive a stake through Count Dracula's heart. It doesn't work cuz he's like boss level, right? I mean, it yeah. takes more than that. Yeah. So they're like out in the alley or something, all the crypts Driving like 84 stakes into him all over his body. (laughs) He's just taking it. Honestly, honestly, I stopped taking notes at this point because I'm just, I don't know. I don't know what's happening. Um, At some point, they just set him on fire, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Pretty much. That's what he told them. uh, Van Helsing, or someone told them to do it to the other guy. Not Van Dien, not Van Helsing. No, yeah. Someone said, you got to... What is it? Stake him, cut his head... Wait, light him on fire, cut his head off, stake him, or whatever the fuck it was. <laughs> yeah, but this is the thing, too. This is what sucks, is that, like, it wasn't Creep Van versus Dracula like it should have been. The Crips are just gangbanging Dracula, and <laughs> and v- Van Dien's like, well, all right, if you're still fighting him, I mean, you may as well but, set him on fire. The, That'll but, probably do it. But the worst part about this is that they do set him on fire, and then how do we see Count Dracula die? We don't! None, none of this matters. The only thing that matters is when Dallas and Nico and Natasha Leone leave the bar. <laughs> yes. Just Paul, jump. I am convinced that is why you picked this movie. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a lot of reasons, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> when they yeah, leave what? the bar. What? Yeah, go on, Chris. What the fuck is this? Creep Van Dien kisses Nico. Kisses this kisses Natasha Leone, and then Nico also kisses Natasha Leone, cementing their triad. <laughs> well, why don't you take me with you? What about your gal pal? You can come. Which we should probably point out because the last time we talked about her, she was bleeding out in a van. She shows up in the end <laughs> as a vampire, which means she probably got it on with it- Nico. Everybody's a fucking vampire. Everybody. Everybody. Wait, how did Natasha turn into a vampire? Because she probably did it with Nico. Huh? I think that's what it was. That's I think or it transmitted through huffing. Ugh. Huffing the paint. <laughs> <laughs> See, that scene that was well, important. Well, okay, if that's the case, there's like 10 more vampires out huffing <laughs> yes. paint. Yes. Yes. <laughs> well, yeah. All of them LA. shared the same huff paint. You know what? Just who gives a shit? Rating time. <laughs> <laughs> Rating time. Love it, Paul. Fucking oh. boss move. Fucking Count Dracula boss move. Just what do you mean, bursting into flames and running off screen without any sort of pomp or circumstance? Yeah, yeah. Creep Van Dien says, "Do one, two, then three. We see the aftermath of one, and then nothing else." Did we also mention the Crips are vampires? And Van Helsing. 
And Van Helsing, Van Helsing becomes a vampire. vampire. Everybody becomes a vampire. <laughs> Oh, yeah, wait, what happens to Van... Oh, wait, yeah, we got to talk about what happens to Van Helsing here. <laughs> hey, wait, 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 okay, but then hold on. We got to reverse the ratings thing, though. We got to get out of ratings real quick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <I can't. laughs> All right, perfect. <laughs> All right, so how does this movie end, guys? Van Helsing's a vampire. <laughs> Rating time! Let me... <laughs> 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 All right, we're back to rating time again. Rating Fuck time. It. Fuck it. <laughs> All right, Fuck fine. It. I'm not gonna. All right. Wait, that Paul, is, is it important to you? Should we go back? No, I don't give a should shit. Should we go back? <laughs> Paul, should we go If you care that back? much, watch the movie. <laughs> you know what? Here's what we'll do. After we're done with the episode, while Chris what? is still recording, he can tell us what happens to Van Helsing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, perfect. Um... It'll be like a, a post-credit sequence, if you will. Exactly. I want to open up the floor here. Does anyone have any suggestions for what the rating system should be? Plum and Juicy Little Misters. <laughs> juicy Little Misters? <laughs> oh, you're such a plump and juicy little mister. <laughs> what was it, Chris? <laughs> Talk about that scene. Oh, who cares? Oh. <laughs> I can't even say it. Plum and juicy little misters. All right, Jake, go ahead, go misters. first. I gotta go first. I don't want to go first. Oh shit! All right, fine. I'll go first. Um, okay. Uh, so much of this movie could have been cut. So much <laughs> of the cast was underused. I don't know if I like the vibe of this. Well, let's have Mike go first. Wow! <laughs> I, right. I don't know, Jay. Don't bring me down Just here. let it happen, all right? I'm first now. Oh, I'm going to let it happen, but you wait, you don't want me to go because you're afraid I'm going to bring you down and you're going to give it to Mike? <laughs> hey, hey, Jay? Jay? I'm going to go ahead. So, so much of this film could have been cut. So much of this cast is underutilized. God damn it. Like, Thank you. There are so many talented oh, people God. involved working on this film. And I have, I have to believe that some fucking TV show studio just fucking pissed all over it. Who knows? But the problem is there's not enough action in, in it to, to go for an action film. There's not enough skin in it to be a Skinamax film even. What? Uh, <laughs> anytime there's sex, it cuts to the sky for some reason, and I don't understand that. Like, it let, at least let me see those soft bodies grinding. Come on. All right. I don't know if I like the vibe of this. Jay, go ahead. <clears throat> <laughs> what? You know, every time there was a sex scene, they cut to the sky for some reason. <laughs> so I don't know why they did that. There wasn't enough oh, God. skin to be a skin flick and enough action for a, an Mike, action say flick. It. What? What? Why did Nico have amnesia? Why did the mom thing happen? But, you know, there was a good cast. Paul, I'm busy drinking Molart. All right, Chris, go. Uh, all right, you know what? Every time there's a sex scene, they cut to the sky. There's... <laughs> There's so much that does not make sense about this movie. But god damn it, the cast is amazing. There's just so many little things that go like that just fly into you under the radar, you know, and, until you do a rewatch or you're like, oh wait, what was that? And just hit rewind and just watch it again. Did you watch how many times did you guys watch this? Twice. Mm -hmm. Fuck that. <laughs> okay. <that's>, yeah. <laughs> no. No, once I'm is gonna good, say man. while I have the floor. Yes. I'm going to say, man, every Richard Elfman movie we've watched. I mean, we saw Forbidden Zone at uh, one of our marathons a few years ago. Loved it. Shrunken Heads. I really enjoyed Shrunken Heads. Hell it yeah. It was pretty great. Yep. So I got to say, I I like this one like way more than Shrunken Heads. Wow. The fuck? Like, what? Oh, my God. Like, okay, it's, it's no Whoa. Forbidden Zone, but I am all in on anything Richard Elfman makes. Uh -huh. Holy shit. This was fucking great. What? I loved this movie. I'm not, I mean, <laughs> not, I'm not, I'm not going to put it in like the super like rare 
level of like say Manborg or something, but Ugh. oh man, I good. Oh, I've totally bought into this movie. This movie was great, <laughs> especially once they hit the uh, the, the club scene. <laughs> Fucking amazing, loved it, and everything from then on. Just so many, just it's just ridiculous. So much stupid <laughs> crap happens, and I loved it. Oh my god, so. Did we did we settle on a uh, rating scale? Yes, Are we, we going did. With the, uh, the plump little misters. Wait, what? What was the full thing? Plump and juicy little misters. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're such a plump and juicy little mister. <laughs> so I'm gonna give this 89 plump and juicy little misters. Nice. Wow. Wow. It's to anyone who can't see I, this, I enjoyed the hell out of this to movie. Anyone who can't see this, and that is. The entire world minus three people. <laughs> Jason Holtz's hands are smashing his head right now. He cannot understand what is happening. Listen, Mike, you're the one who gave the incredible bulk like a 100. Come on. I did not. Oh. <laughs> All right, Jay, what's your score? 65. Oh, God. Oh, my God. And that's being generous. <laughs> Mike, say it. Forty-nine plump and juicy little misters. Holy God, oh my God, you people! I'm, I cannot believe I'm friends with you. Fucking shrunken heads was infinitely better than this. Oh, Holy shit! Oh, no I'm kidding. <laughs> I will watch anything Richard Elfman does, but fuck me, this was boring. Oh shrunken heads, though. Hell yes. <laughs> hey, Paul, what did you think? I guess there's just. Two schools of thought here, and I'm in firmly, obviously, in, in, in Chris's school. I thought it was fun. I mean, the entire time, you know, like, the, the type of B-movies that I usually enjoy the most are the type where I'm, the entire time I'm going, what the fuck is happening right now? <laughs> and Fair. say what you want about this movie, but that was definitely the case for most, for, for most of Modern Vampires, so... I'm just gonna go with a solid 85. Oh, you're such a plump and juicy little mister. Nice. <laughs> nice. Right. I mean, yeah, nice score. Okay. If yeah. nobody else came up with anything, I was going to go with one out of a hundred custom built vampire tables that allow you to feast on a human head. <laughs> so. <laughs> Pl plump and juicy little misters is a little more concise. You can discuss that more on our spin off show, Rejected Ratings. <laughs> 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 on the next episode of b-movie mania jay i believe you're up next let's not waste any time what do you got for us next time on b-movie mania you know one of my favorite b-movies is now streaming Ooh. and yeah i i'm not even i'm not hiding it it's one of my favorites um, we have watched it at a marathon, so this is the second <gasps> nice. time. Oh, Showgirls Two! No, it is not Showgirls Two. <laughs> Thank I Christ! You. <laughs> God, uh, my pick is going to prove that you can't keep a good cop dead. Oh yeah! I am excited to talk to you guys at length about Dead Heat. Oh yeah! Yes. Oh my God! Oh, dead yeah. Heat. Oh hell yeah! On Amazon Prime. <laughs> oh man, I love you. I think did I, did I introduce you to that one, Jay? Yes, you did, Chris. Oh, yes, yes, you did. <laughs> Listen up, maniacs. Do you have a question or a comment? Would you like to uh, send some bourbon to Uncle Lloydie? You can contact the gang on Facebook at B Movie Mania. You can also drop them a line at bmoviemania.com. Reach out, touch them. They are touching themselves, and they might just reach back. I'm Lloyd Kaufman saying, see you next time on B Movie Mania. Woohoo! T shirts, five star ratings. Why, Chris, why did you shout that? <laughs> <laughs> because we were arguing about Jay's pick. No, you're supposed to fucking segue into the fucking sales spill. Oh, because I said that because we have t-shirts for sale. We have five-star reviews for sale. Wait, Just what? Review. No, 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 no. We are not We're not paying anyone to rate us five stars. Mike, talk about t-shirts. Okay, so 
1742, someone invented a t-shirt. And it was what? great. Okay, we're not ta- we're not on the dollop. <laughs> <laughs> no, there would have involved racism if it was the dollop. The anyway. t-shirt is a style of fabric shirt named after the T-shape of its body and sleeves. Exactly. Ooh. See? Traditionally, it was short sleeves and a round neckline, known mm-hmm. as the crew neck. Good night, everybody. Which lacks a collar. <laughs> That's T-shirts beautiful. are generally made of stretchy, light, and inexpensive fabric and are easy to clean, and we sell them on our website. Yes, we do. We have a h- bunch of new custom designs about the episodes. Uh, Slade, C- what's his name? Slade Craven? Slade Craven. Craven. Slade Craven. I'm, Slade Craven. I've got my Slade Craven shirt right now. Oh, Don't yeah, forget about just... Crank and Rankin. Crank and Rankin. Crank and Rankin <laughs> we're, from Green Slime. We're just picking just, names for people. I, I just got to say, I love <laughs> my new t-shirt. That is available. We also have... S- <laughs> hey, we also have sweatpants available as well yeah. uh, that you can get. And they're very comfy, and uh, they're not on your butt, so that, d- don't worry. They're just on down your leg. The design is down your leg. It's not a weird, juicy butt thing. It doesn't, so there's no, like, material on your butt? No, it's not. Okay, so they're technically on your butt. We said we're not going to put, like, B-Movie Mania on someone's butt. It's a little weird. You know what I love most about our sweatpants? What? Oh, you know what? My my daughter is here. I can't say it. So never mind. <laughs> never mind. All right. Anyway, thank you for oh, listening. There she goes. There she goes. <laughs> like right. she didn't hear you. Uh, like she hasn't heard you this entire night. <laughs> She's gonna go back to her brother and be like, "Dad's a perv." Yeah. Probably. Probably. Dad likes vampire porn clubs. <laughs> <laughs> ah! All right. Anyway, well, thanks I, for what listening. What I wanted to say is that our sweatpants have plenty of room. <laughs> There's plenty of space for your penis or vagina, so you can appreciate that for men or women. <laughs> if you've got that protruding vagina. <laughs> all right, so thanks for listening. Anyway, thanks for checking out shirts. Thanks for rating and reviewing. You Follow really us need on social a lot of media. room in there. For we're on it. Facebook, and we're on Instagram, and we're on Twitter. Check it out. We're, we love to follow us. We love interacting with you. Uh, if the Chris, quarantine's still going out. on, we've been hanging out at fuckcovid.party on Sundays That's doing streams. That's an screen. expensive spin. Uh, if it's not that going on, baby, we we'll stream anyway. Anyway, we love spew. you all. I'm sorry that these guys oh, are quietly, thank spew. you, Paul, for editing them down, uh, yelling in the background. We love you all. Stay safe, and uh, good night. I think you can get a $5 spew at the sex club. $5 spew. <laughs> That's the next t-shirt you can buy. <laughs> Five dollar spew. All right, the vampire club. Let's go to my night beast commercials. (laughs) The five dollar spew.